So one of my towing videos is on weight distribution and one of the questions is why does it matter exactly where you place the weights on the trailer because the total trailer weight doesn't actually change. So let's take um, this trailer here and it's got a nice cargo load of three snatch rings. We're going to add two weights to it. We could add them here pretty much over the axles and we get a ball weight of around 130 grams on the, the front there or we could take those same weights we could put one at the front like that and we could balance it with one at the back and the ball weight again is around 130 grams so there's no difference to the ball weight no difference to the total trailer weight but somehow there is a big difference in the trailer dynamics and how safe that combination is so I've got a few experiments to help explain that. One involves two wine bottles, another involves a ruler and two bulldog clips and two cartons of beer. We're going to use the bulldog clips and the ruler first. So you're going to take the bulldog clips and put them pretty much in the centre, around about the 15 centimetre mark on this 30 centimetre ruler. And then once it's balanced like that, put your hand over it and then just do that as fast as you can absolutely as quick as you can then when you've got bored of that after a few seconds take those same bulldog don't do that okay take those same bulldog clips and put them right at the end like so now the total mass of this combination has not changed it still weighs the same as before all we've done we've taken the mass and we've moved it to either end then take your hand and then do that as fast as you can you will notice there is a difference I'm going to explain that difference and how it relates to towing later on in the video so there's something else you can do with the bulldog clip and the ruler and that's balance it on a block of wood like this then just displace it and watch the effect And then place the bulldog clips like so, leaving space for the block of wood in the middle. Displace it again and watch the difference. It settles down a lot quicker than when we had the bulldog clips at the end. And that is something else we're going to get into later on as well. So now we're going to use the two bottles of wine. We're going to take one bottle, we're going to move it in a small circle like that. Take the other bottle, move it in a larger circle. Which took more effort? Well, clearly the smaller circle took less effort than the larger circle. Pretty obvious, but hold that thought. Next experiment, we're just going to roll the wine bottle slowly and then stop it. Then we're going to roll it fast and stop it which took more energy well clearly rolling it faster to get it to speed took more energy but also it took more energy to slow it down once it was moving faster again pretty obvious but hold that thought so this is where i get to look like an idiot in the name of trying to promote understanding of towing physics leading to greater safety so take your two bottles of wine hold them close to your chest and then twist your body to the left and right as far and as fast as you can like that like that and then outstretch your arms and then do exactly the same left and right as far and fast as you can and if you want you can even try 360 like that and like that what you'll find there is that the two feel different when they're close versus when they're further apart so for this demonstration you're going to need two 24 packs of beer strap them firmly to the center of a shopping trolley and then spin it as fast as you can and catch it then take those two packs of beer again and put them right at either end of the trolley and do exactly the same again see what the difference is 
and then you can try a handling course like this. So you can do this experiment with any trolley, but the longer the trolley and the heavier the weights, the more effective it will be. So let's put all of these weird experiments in context then. Let's take two lengths here, and that could be, for example, the uh, ruler I've got here. It could be me holding the uh, wine bottle out or whatever else, and they're identical. We're going to put two weights represented by these black circles at the end, and another two weights exactly the same as these, but close in. And then we are going to look at how big a radius that takes. That's a large radius there, so when this rotates around, the weight goes in a large radius, and over here it's in a smaller radius. So what that means is that these weights over here have to take a longer distance and travel faster, and therefore use more energy to get up to speed and more energy to slow down, which is exactly what we found with the wine bottles when we were rolling them along um, the desk there. Now, here's an animation. There's one, there's the other one. And if I do both at the same time, you'll see that both of these bars rotate at the same speed, but you can clearly see that the weights at the end here move faster than the weights here and here. So there you go. And again. Now let's translate that to actually towing a trailer. So here we've got a 3,000 kilogram trailer. For the sake of argument, it's 2,800 kilos on the wheels and then 200 kilograms on table mass. And we have two weights here. And let's say they're 200 kilograms each or something like, like that. We then have an identical trailer here, except we have moved the weights an equal distance forwards and then backwards um, from the original center position. And that again gives us the same table mass that hasn't changed and the same total weight and this uh, combination here will be dramatically less stable than that combination because the weights are further away from the axles okay we're back to our trailer again we've got our two weights and we're going to put them where they should be which is pretty much over the axles and then we're just going to displace the trailer you can see that it doesn't actually bounce that much and it pretty much comes straight back to level. Now we take these same weights and we put one at the front, one at the back, and that would be the same table mass. We displace it again. And you can see that it takes a lot longer to come back to level. And that's exactly the same principle with the bulldog clips and with the beer and with the wine. It's all exactly the same. The actual weight itself is one thing. The weight distribution is actually probably more important. So we'll show that again. Weights at either end. Weights in the middle. And that's the difference. Now, though I've shown the effects of poor weight distribution in a vertical plane, which is what we call pitching, it's also equally applicable and probably um, even more important that it actually has a, a negative effect on a side-to-side -side movement or yawing like that. And that was why I did the demonstration with the bulldog clips and also with the wine to try and show that. So it's really important to get your weight centrally distributed. So let's look at the effect of too much nose weight by adding too greater weight to the front. The first thing you can see is that the back of the car pitches down. And that puts a lot of weight on the rear axle, which has uh, the effect of increasing grip quite dramatically, which is a good thing, but then we've used up pretty much all of our suspension travel, so the vehicle's got no more suspension. If I take that off, you can see that the suspension there can bounce up and down. If I put that on, then there's no suspension left. So that can actually happen in real life with vehicles. You can have so little suspension travel left that uh, the suspension can't work properly. And if that is the case, then your braking and ride and general safety is compromised. By pitching down here, we've also got a reduction in weight on the front wheels, and that means a reduction in grip, so you're less able to steer and therefore control the car. Now in the case of a tandem trailer, you can see that the wheel here has got very little weight in it. I can actually turn it. I can't 
turn that one as well and because there's very little weight on that wheel very little grip and you don't get that stabilizing effect and also the center of gravity is moved forwards as well so there's a whole bunch of reasons not to put too much nose weight on oh and you might also exceed the rear axle load limit as well as putting a lot of stress on your chassis um, so don't overload the nose too much centralizing weight is what you want to do now if we put the weight right at the back we get a different set of problems you can see that um, we've actually reduced the weight on the rear axle so there's actually less weight here as you can see we can actually turn those wheels quite effectively now which means those wheels don't have the grip to keep the trailer in order um, and then these wheels here at the front of the tandem trailer um, actually don't have much weight in them so again we've got less stabilization and we've got this weight all the way at the back it acts like a bit of a pendulum and it's fairly easy for the trailer to sort of wave the, the car around so let's say we've got a trailer which is a bit unstable it's got a weight pretty well forwards to the front and another one at the rear and some in the center so the conventional wisdom is whenever you've got an unstable trailer just keep adding table mass so you add a bit of table mass to the front and it's still unstable so you add a bit more and hope that works now you can see the problem which is that we've now got a fairly heavy weight right at the front and one right at the back now the worst thing you can do with a trailer is to have a minimal amount of tow ball mass or heavy weight at the back but equally having a lot of tow ball mass can actually destabilize things as well so instead of doing that the better solution is to centralize those two weights and the other weights here and then that actually may end up with less table mass but because the weight is centralized it will be more stable now I've done that pretty easily here just by moving around weights and with a car trailer and so forth that's pretty easy much more difficult with a caravan but the principle remains the same so if we don't have the weight centralized like this and we put it at either end yes the table mass is uh, within limits but then the trailer will start to pitch up and down like that and it will start to yaw and then we end up doing that with the tow car and basically the trailer bosses around the tow car which is how you end up with trailer accidents all right, so to summarize then there's two points and a couple of notes number one you've got to focus on centralizing weight and do not put heavy weights on a trailer at either end in order to balance it that will lead to instability two whenever you hear about trailer instability on forums someone always says just add more table mass now that's not necessarily a bad thing because you certainly don't want too little but if you just keep adding it and adding it that can actually lead to an unstable trailer as well and you've got to focus more on centralizing it as opposed to just merely blindly adding more and more hoping it's going to make the situation better now if you've got a caravan it's actually really hard to centralize your weight because it's just not that flexible a system for moving weight around some of the things you can look at are batteries spare wheels a lot of off-road vans have got two heavy spare wheels right at the back really bad place for them um, and water tanks and finally there is a lot more to towing dynamics um, than just the basics I've covered here I will be doing more on the subject there I'd really like to work with a caravan manufacturer who understands this and can demonstrate that they have designed their caravans in a way which makes them easy to tow from a dynamics perspective so far I'm yet to actually see any evidence of that but I'd love to be proven wrong either which way hope you found this video useful please like subscribe share any questions drop them in the comments thank you